Hello and welcome to the SciShow Talk Show. Today on SciShow, where we talk to cool people about cool stuff. This is Lindsay Doe, the host of Sexplanations and, uh, and knower of things about sex and other stuff. Yeah. Because you recently went to a museum that was just for penises. The Phallological Museum in Iceland. It's in Iceland. It's in Iceland. Right by the bus station. Wait, there's just one bus station? <laughs> There's a main transfer station, and there is a grocery store, and it is in between the two of those. So I actually got so to go past the Phallological Museum every day I was there. What I want to talk about is the female orgasm. Okay. And how it is being debated by multiple theories and different types of sciences that we have something that is either created to put me to sleep so that I will be able to get pregnant more easily, mm -hmm. or something that bonds me to my partner so I don't leave, or something that lets my partner know I'm so sexually satisfied that I'm not leaving. And then um, also a theory by Stephen Jay Gould, which says uh, it was intended to be a penis, right? Right. same undifferentiated embryonic tissue, but it didn't make it. So are you saying that the female orgasm is more complicated, more nuanced, uh, more studied, more interesting than the male orgasm? Is that what's happening right now? No. Okay. I'm saying that there's no consensus on what its purpose is. Oh. And so we have all of these theories, but here's the newest one, the oh, one that I think is most exciting. There's another, in addition to all those theories, there's something else. Yes. Okay. The one to rule them all. Are you so excited? I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. So we, ha we have those four theories. One is that the orgasm puts me to sleep and relaxes me so that I receive the sperm and have an easier chance of impregnation. The other is that it bonds me to my partner. The third is that it lets my partner know that I'm sexually satisfied and therefore I'm not going to wander off. And the fourth is that it is uh, intended to be a penis, but it didn't make its, its way, so it has no function. It's a biological after effect. Yes. All right, so th this theory comes about that says, wait a minute, what we know is that women are more likely to get pregnant if they have an orgasm one minute before her male heterosexual partner ejaculates or 45 minutes after. After the orgasm. Af after, after the ejaculation. The okay. Right? So, That's a so is that a window or is that two distinct times? Two distinct times. Wow. Yes. So we know that orgasm can help with mm -hmm. fertility. Mm -hmm. And I have actually seen really cool footage that they did, of the inside of a woman's vagina, where there is a, they show the man's ejaculate coming. It creates a pool right outside the cervix, which is kind of like the tip of a person's nose with a little hole in it. And so the cervix actually, just like a duck head, dips into this pool of liquid when the woman is having orgasmic contractions. It just psh, psh, psh. Hmm. So to me, that says the orgasm has a very distinct function, actually, right. that it, it is determining whether or not she is going to receive this sperm successfully or unsuccessfully. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what I think is the coolest part of it. It's really quiet in here. Everybody wants to know. <laughs> get to big it. Breath. Okay. She is more likely to have more orgasms and better orgasms if her partner is attractive. Mm -hmm. And because attractive is somewhat subjective, they've created objective measures of that, and they include in it masculinity, sem uh, masculinity, symmetry, flawless complexion, and dominance. Mm. How do you measure dominance? They measure it on scales that are objective, but then they also do partner rating and mm -hmm. then self-report. So attractiveness affects the frequency of orgasm. Yes. If the attractiveness of the partner uh, increases orgasm and orgasm increases the chances of fertility, mm -hmm. then you're also maybe saying that being an attractive partner increases your chances of making a baby. Yes. It's fascinating. Yes. Because nope. women are selecting, and I realize that this conversation is very heterocentric, but women are selecting in those cases men who have um, better genes mm -hmm. because attractiveness is also correlated to their health and 
Yeah, general biological success. Yes, their immune systems. But attractiveness is very subjective and has a lot more going on than we think there is going on. Oh, yeah. Which is really neat. A person can be with someone attractive and not have orgasms at all. Right. And a person can be with somebody very skilled sexually and not have orgasms or have orgasms. That what they're finding is that it has less to do with sexual skill and the person's um, anatomy and what they are aren't capable of and more with the appearance of their partner. Which is, mm. it's, it's a little disheartening. Yeah. Super disheartening. But it, as far <laughs> as partner selection and the continuation of our species, what that's saying is that she is saving her orgasms mm -hmm. for a man that is attractive to her. Right. Yeah. Um, and that does not mean that uh, unattractive people will never give people orgasms because you don't know who you're going to be attractive to. That's true. It, in the research study, while there are objective measures, there is also how the person rated himself and his attractiveness. So right. Right. Just that honesty there. Fascinating conversation. So uh, we talked about some penises. Do you want to see an animal that isn't a penis? Do, do snakes have penises? They do have penises. They do. Snakes kind of look like penises. We're going to meet a snake is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Everybody's trying not to laugh and just give up. Just laugh. It's fine. Oh, man. Jesse, you have brought a marvelous animal. This is big. Isn't she amazing? What is she and how much does she weigh? <laughs> she is a red tail boa. Her scientific name is Boa Constrictor. Oh. And she's about 25, 30 pounds. That is big. Very sense. awkward. 30 pounds. <laughs> well, Very right long. now it's evenly distributed. <laughs> it is, it's nice. I don't have to do anything right now. <laughs> um, she's just over seven feet long, and the species can get up to 12 feet. So she, Daisy is very much attached to you right now. <laughs> Literally attached to me? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, she's, she's constricted around me. Now she's not actually constricting, she's just holding on. Just for support. So these guys are going to be arboreal, which means they live up in mm -hmm. the trees, um, and when they're younger and about this age when they get too big they're, they're not going to be able to support themselves up there so they'll go down and be terrestrial but um mainly arboreal so they have very strong instincts to wrap and cling themselves around branches they mm -hmm. can sleep up in trees and uh, hunt in trees and and all that sort of thing um so you know she's just this is her natural instinct is to hold on so she's not actually constricting me right. she doesn't want to eat me um, that would be a different feeling for you. Much different. She would be biting me at the same time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she knows size. She's not going to try yeah. and go after something that's that she can't fit. Um, inside now, of her. Inside of her. Not yeah. even in her head, because her head can, you know, her jaw expands. It right. stretches and expands um, to fit something actually the twice the the width of the the widest part of her body. So you know, is how big that her head big. can get. Is how big of a prey item she can eat and her, how, why, how far down her jaw can expand. Do you know how that works? You want me to explain it to well, you? Well, I mean, I, I, they unhinge, right? Kinda, yeah, yeah. It's like rubber bands almost, it stretches down. Oh, okay. It stretches down, and then it, there's a, a, a part here, the bones come apart there, and the skin stretches, and it stretches apart there as well. So it becomes this huge lower, oh, man. lower lip jaw area. Um, and then they will pull it, you know, with their teeth, they'll kind of walk it, into their mouth and then their jaw will go Can around it and then they'll it. pull it in a little bit until they get it back to their neck and then they'll use their muscles to grab it and pull it down into their past their heart and their lungs and into their stomach that is like orgasm yeah it's constricting yeah, muscles peristaltic contractions Ooh. there we go <laughs> <laughs> pull this in again and again wow but you guys were talking about orgasms and and penises and vaginas and that fun, <laughs> fun stuff. And uh, snakes, they do have, they have penai. They have two. So multiple. They have two, one on each side. Why not? Yeah. Diphalophilia. Ooh. That's the love of two penises. Yes. So guy. I don't think these two are loving each other. They're on the same. It would be, it's diphalia, I think is diphalia. the word. Diphalia. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, they, they're going to wrap around the female and whatever angle works best. Oh, right. That so there's not two work. vaginas. No, no, just one. Cause, so cause... the lady friend wouldn't... No, the lady friend would be diphalophilia because... Yes, because she likes animals the, that have two There we go. 
But yeah, you were um, in the very beginning. You guys were talking about you know, um, are humans special? Mm -hmm. are, are the female human? Are they the only ones that have orgasms? And that's not true. You can actually um, there's whole studies in science about um, orgasms in animals and specifically female orgasms in animals. Mm. And so you can any pretty much any primate female you can make have an orgasm. And then they've even done it in a few cows as well. And wow. Then, yeah. It's interesting. Bonobos. That's how they shake hands. Oh, bonobos. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can do a whole show yeah, on bonobos. A... May I hold it? You, you want to try? try? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't seem like a try thing, right? It doesn't <laughs> do decide or, do or did you do or no? All right. All right. You want me to stand up? Yep. Stand up. Okay. You're going to put your arms out like this. And she's going to come into your arms. And then she'll probably wrap around your body. That's a big animal. Oh, jeez. That is awful. And so the important thing with snakes is that you support each third of their body. Oh, my. <laughs> so I'm going to put that below. And I'm going to twist this. <laughs> he wants to knock me over. Oh, you want to go between oh, my legs? Oh, there she goes. Hi, <laughs> you are so heavy. It's like the same size as you. <laughs> you can hold on to my leg. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good shot right there. <laughs> there you go. Snake lady. Now you can sit down. Oh, nice oh. work. I don't know if you're holding on for safety right now. <laughs> You've got to squeeze. <laughs> yeah, she's my new person. Oh, look at it move. And wow, wow. And you're giving that me the privilege. That is so cool. I don't even know how she's moving right now. Isn't is that it neat? The, is she using her scales? Uh, muscle contractions, and her scales are going to just help her so she doesn't slip backwards. Okay. But it's just muscle contractions as she goes along. It's going to push her. With a scaly animal, you, you think that they're going to be hard. But it turns out that they are often very soft and like lovely to touch. Smooth. Yeah. Smooth and soothing, and that, you and you can feel how she's moving on you. It's almost like it's soothing. It's mm -hmm. soothing. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Wow. Daisy, you're a champion. It was really nice to meet you. Um, I think you bring something exceptional to SciShow Talk Show, uh, and I appreciate it. Your ever unblinking, striped eyes staring <laughs> into my soul. Uh, ooh, and the hissing. Uh, Jesse, thanks for bringing her in. Lindsay, thanks for our complicated conversation on orgasms and human sexuality, as yeah. always. If you want to check out Lindsay, she's at youtube.com slash sexplanations. Jesse, a link to your channel is in the description. I'm not telling you where to go because it is a weird spelling of animal Sorry wonders. about that. Thank you guys for watching this episode of SciShow Talk Show. If you want to keep getting smarter with us, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe. Mm -hmm.